Hi there. Many of you are probably questioning my uh, fascination with older cameras. So let me clarify something right up front. I realize that newer cameras are higher performance. I realize that image quality has improved over the years. Uh, if I am seriously out to uh, get some good pictures, I will take my Pentax K3, which I know is not state-of-the-art, but has a very good 24 megapixel sensor. Or one of my Micro Four Thirds cameras, which again are not state-of-the-art, but do have the, uh, the rather good 16 megapixel sensor. I don't have the 20 megapixel models. That is when I need a very good image for some reason. But let me clarify this even further. I still think the old cameras are viable, and therein lies the problem. A lot of people see them as obsolete and that's it. But they are still quite viable. Uh, this image right here, which probably doesn't even fit on your screen right now. This image right here is a 20 by 30 print from a 6 megapixel Pentax camera and it looks fine and it was not printed by some high-end printing house that did some work with it to make it better no it was printed at a walmart on canvas that came from a camera much like this one right here a six megapixel pentax uh, i can't remember if it was a ds model that took this but I'm pretty sure it was. It was either a DS or a DL. I later had a K100D Super, but that was the camera my wife used. And I took this picture, so I'm pretty certain it was with one of these. It has no image stabilization. It uh, does not clean the sensor for you. It's just a very basic 6 megapixel uh, digital SLR. Now, for those people saying, well, okay, what does that really mean? Well, think about it. The Nikon D70 had basically the same sensor as this. Uh, it had a better processor, so it gave better JPEGs. But the RAW files were comparable. So the D70 was used by many uh, professional photographers uh, back in the day as an excellent tool for everything from wedding photography to, well portrait photography, wildlife, the whole, the whole gamut. When I upgraded, I upgraded to this. This is a Pentax K10D. It is quite hefty compared to that first model. As you can see by the size difference, there is a significant difference between the two. Now, what's the big deal with the K10D? It was Pentax's first shall we call it serious digital SLR. It had the 10 megapixel sensor that was also used by Nikon in the, uh, the D200. It was also used by Sony in pretty much all of their first uh, run of Alpha series cameras. Those are the cameras that were basically rebadged and slightly re-engineered Minolta's. Uh, so it's a decent sensor. It's a CCD. It's not CMOS, just like the 6 megapixel is also CCD. So it has some of the limitations that go with that, but it also has the excellent quality that you get from a good CCD, CCD sensor. So do I still use this? Uh, I call it my disposable. It is extremely rugged. This particular camera has fallen out of a pickup truck. Now, it wasn't running at the time, but it did fall onto concrete. Uh, the only damage to it, actually there was no damage to it, and <laughs> they do bounce. Uh, there is a slight scuff on one corner here, I can't even remember where it is now. Uh, it has worked flawlessly. Uh, right now it is at about, uh, I think it's around 40,000 uh, exposures. Uh, the other one I showed you is a fairly recent one that I got uh, from someone who wasn't really using it. Uh, the DS has only about uh, 5,000 on it. It's uh, practically new. So, 
This camera is rugged. It takes decent images in decent light. The high ISO performance is abysmal. It only rose up to 3200, and you really don't want to go there. In fact, let me stop for a minute. I say 3200, but I may have that wrong. Let me see. Yes, this camera only goes to 1600. It was the 6 megapixel that went to 3200. And at 1600, it's pretty bad. So this is basically like shooting ASA 400 film, or ISO 400 film. So you don't want to go past 400, uh, but you do get decent, in good light, you get decent image quality. So it's still viable. And that's the, the word I'm looking for, viable. And the reason why I keep saying this is that I know there are people out there who want, uh, how should I put it, a real camera. They want the experience of using a dedicated photographic device rather than their phone. Now, will that camera take as good a picture as a phone? In some situations, no. But it does have the option of using different lenses. Older lenses are quite inexpensive. And because Pentax kept their compatibility right on through their line, any old Pentax lens, even an old manual focus lens, will work on that camera. That gives you so many options and allows you to get into real cameras for a very affordable price. So, guys, I am not suggesting at all that anybody put aside their new camera and drag out an old clunker. This thing, sh both these cameras shoot at three frames per second. This one here runs out of breath at about six frames. This one, if you're in JPEG, will carry on till it fills the card. But it's only three frames per second. It's not going to catch a lot of action. If you are doing something that uh, involves uh, something happening quickly and you want to take a lot of frames to get that moment you want these are not the cameras for it but if you want to shoot portraits if you want to shoot landscapes if you want to shoot uh, relatively slow moving things they work quite fine and therein lies the only takeaway from this particular video and that is that if you have an older camera uh, upgrade if you need to but Try to identify the fact that it is a need and not just a want. Uh, if you, for instance, uh, really, really desire video, you really want to get into video, and I'm sorry I used the word want there, you really want to get into video, obviously these old cameras that do not shoot video are not for you. However, if still images is what you're looking for, they will do more than adequate work. As I said, I mean, 6 megapixels is way more than you need for social media. Uh, the typical social media image is, um, well, the biggest is 4K, which would be uh, 8 megapixels. Okay, so yes, it'll, it'll be stretched a little there. But most people are viewing things on a screen that is no more than uh, full HD. At full HD, that's only about 2 megapixels. So your 6 megapixel image has a tremendous amount of detail. And remember, even those small images can print big. Well, nothing more to say about that particular topic. Uh, I have shown a few examples uh, in here of some of the shots that I have done with these cameras. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. In future, I will be looking more to the process of photography again. Uh, I, you notice that this time I've gotten away from talking about Micro Four Thirds because I think I may have exhausted that particular topic for the moment. But again, I'm still shooting this on a Micro Four Thirds camera, and that is still my go-to camera right now if I am going out to shoot because my K3 is rather hefty, and these cameras... Uh, you know, if you have something better, you're not going to use these. Uh, like I said, the old K10D, that is for hazardous conditions. If I'm going out on a boat or something like that, or I'm doing something where my camera is going to be somewhat at risk, I will take the K10D. If it dies, if I kill it on <laughs> one of these trips, 
Uh, I will be a little upset, but it will not be a great loss because it has served me very well for a lot of years. That camera has been to the Arctic. It has taken pictures at minus 20 degrees. It has done tremendously well. Well, uh, if you like this video, give me a like. If you want to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos, please do. And of course, if you think somebody might get something useful from this particular video, then share it. Bye for now.